and welcome. I'm Alfie Carlyle. I'm a digital leader at Devonport High School for Boys and today I'm going to be talking through and showing you uh, two-factor authentication on Google accounts. Now uh, first off we want to discuss uh, what is two-factor authentication. Now two-factor authentication works on the principle that when you go in to log in to your account, be it a Google account or be it a service like Dropbox, you have two steps to logging in. Now the first is something that you know. So that will be your password or your passphrase. Now that is what you usually do to log in and you then be logged in. Well what two-factor authentication does is it adds this second layer over here. Now you then have to do a second step. Now that may be entering a one-time code. So a one-time code that may be sent to your uh, mobile device. So your smartphone or your uh, iPad or something like that that gives you a code to let you in. It might be a physical device such as a USB key which we're going to get onto later and uh, or it might be something that you use for example with online banking like a card reader which gives you a unique code every time you use it to ensure that someone needs to have that device if they want to make any changes on your account and that's basically what this is because somebody may get hold of your password they may be able to guess it but unless they have this other thing for example your phone or unless they have your USB key, or unless they have your card reader, and, in, and actually in that case, you actually also need your card. So it's incredibly secure in that even if someone got hold of your password, they still wouldn't be able to get into your account. Now, whether you already have two-factor authentication turned on or whether you're setting up for the first time, I'm going to cover both points, and I'll also be looking at the FIDO uh, unique two-factor authentication USB key, which is a way to log into your account instead of using mobile phone codes, um, but using a, a key which is very similar to a memory stick, um, but I'll explain how that works later. So, um, now we know what two-factor authentication is and why it benefits us, we can now look at enabling it. So, right now I'm on the Google homepage and I'm logged in to uh, a Google account, uh, the at dhsb.org Google account for the digital leaders. This is one that I'm using for this demonstration. So first thing we need to do is to come up to my icon on the top right here and go to where it says my account. So I'm going to click on that one now. And this brings up this uh, account here. It will say welcome and then your name and all, it has all these options. So you've got three panels here, sign in, personal and account preferences. Now if we come down to signing into Google, uh, we can review our, what our current setup is. So it tells us when we last changed our password, whether to step verification is in fact on, in our case it isn't, and whether we've got any recovery emails or phones um, which help us get back into our, our account if we're locked out. Now that's not so important in uh, school environment because our IT support team will be able to reset your password for you if you forget it, but if, if it's your personal Gmail account, which you can also secure with two-factor and I recommend you do, then you are responsible for keeping your access to that. Google will not grant you access back into your account for the simple reason that they don't know that it's you and they could be giving um, a criminal access to all your personal data so they, they won't reset your password just because you asked them. So let's have a look at two-step verification. So we can click down here, it's going to ask you to verify your password in a minute. So here is Google's diagram of how two-factor authentication works. They tell you that you'll need a verification code, be that texted to your phone or if you've got a smartphone you can use an app to generate the code. Uh, it tells you to keep it simple, that you only have to do it to your computer you're using every 30 days. And finally, uh, it tells you that you are able to use special backup methods to get back into your account should you get locked out. So let's start the setup. It's going to ask me to confirm my password, which I'm going to do now. Okay, and we're logged in. So uh, it's reminded me to add a recovery phone and email. I'm going to skip that for now. Um, you can do that or you can do it later. So it wants us to set up a mobile phone. So this is your mobile phone that you'll have with you when you want to log into a computer. So I'm going to enter my mobile number. Uh, that's going to be blurred out for you so that you can't see that one. And it says, how do you want us to send it to you, by a text or a voice call? Well, I'm going to send, say, send it to me by text because that's just quicker. Now, if I go to my smartphone, I see that I have a text from Google and it tells me that my Google verification code is 601 
0.072. Now I'm fine telling this to everyone on the internet and I'm fine releasing this because it's only valid that time. I've just used it now and no one else can now use that code. You'd have to generate another one. So unless you've got my mobile phone, you can't log into the account. That's, that's the point. Um, it asks me if I want to trust this computer. Now trusting a computer, if you teach in a room regularly or it's your office or your personal computer, then you want to trust the computer because that way it remembers you for 30 days and you only have to do that entering code process every 30 days. Um, if it's a computer that you're in just once or it's in a public place, it's safer to not trust it because then you're um, reducing the risk that someone can get in. And finally it tells me to turn on two-step. Uh, if I lose my phone, I can always change my code in the account settings. And if you do lose your phone, um, you obviously won't be able to receive these codes, which is why it's good to set up a backup phone number. You can even add a landline phone number, so you could add the uh, your home phone number or a uh, desk phone um, to the school. So, for example, I could say my backup number was the school's number and then tell them to give me a voice call and that would be a way that you could in an emergency get back into your account and then uh, sort out adjusting your mobile number so it's Google make it easy so you don't ever completely get locked out of your account okay next thing to notice down here are these backup codes now these are good if you've forgotten your phone or um, you don't have your a unique two-factor key which I'm going to talk about later these are literally just physical codes you can put in your wallet if you want you print off these codes put them in your wallet and then that allows you to get into the account um, it will let you print them down here or you can save them to a text file so you can save them say to a memory stick or maybe save them uh, somewhere safe such as your Dropbox or a network share uh, and, it, and as you use them it will count down saying you have 10 unused, 9 unused I mean it should be rare that you use them because obviously um, you're only going to be using them if you forget your phone which most of us have our phones with us all the time um, and finally just a note down here it says you can get the codes via the app now they do have an app um, to set it up you simply download it and it will give you a, co a QR code to scan so we can say switch to app if we want say I've got an iPhone and then I would scan this code here and what that would do is that I would then, to get my code, I'd have to go into it to the app and it would give me the code. Now that's good because it means that I'm not always getting texts and texts and texts. I can just open the app. But similarly, it is quicker to get texts instead of having to log into the phone and find the app. So it's whichever you prefer. Okay, I'm in a completely new computer. It's a computer I haven't verified before. Let's open up our web browser here and go to Gmail. Now I'm using incognito mode because what that does is it emulates using a brand new computer so it won't pick up any of the settings off the laptop I'm currently using and I'll get into my password and suddenly there we go it tells us that it sent me a text to my phone so if, if someone it has my password but not my phone they certainly aren't getting into my account so that's not going to be an issue and my account is secured which is especially important considering uh, staff have access to student data etc on their accounts and even for students you know you don't want to leave your account logged in somewhere and risk it getting compromised so down here it says don't ask again on this computer and it says to keep this checked if it's a personal computer if it's shared then no you shouldn't and there we go we're logged in um, so now I can go around and browse my email as usual uh, do that in a new tab See, I can come down, read my emails, and we're logged in as we usually are. There's no difference to you apart from that extra step logging in. Um, when you next log in, it gives you these reminders every now and again to say, is this still your mobile number? Do you want to add a backup phone? Um, you can say, yep, this is all correct. This is my mobile number. I'll say that looks good. Thank you. And there we go. And it's returning me now to my email. And you'll see here, uh, as a good example, that I'm logged into my email, that it sends you an email whenever things happen. So it tells me that I turned two step on. It tells me that someone new has signed in. This is my computer here, so I know it's me because it says it's from Plymouth on a Mac. Um, so Google does a lot to keep you aware of what's going on on your account. Um, so it's going to be highly unlikely that things are going to be going on without your knowing. So we've set up two-factor authentication. So if you're just starting at this point, if you've skipped this point, basically you've already got two-factor two authentication turned on. You're either using the text messages or you're using the app, which brings up a code on your phone. And you've been using that and it's been working fine. We're going to uh, try an alternate way now, and that's with uh, a little device called the Security Key. It's made by a company called Plug Up. It's a French company, and uh, it works on a uh, protocol called unique two-factor authentication 
Um, now you should be seeing some videos on the screen right now of what the device looks like. You can see it's about the size of my thumb and it just goes on a key ring and it looks very much like a memory stick and uh, it's obviously certainly much lighter than carrying around your phone for verification codes just as a secondary point there. So let's have a look at how we set it up. So we on our Google home page like we were before and we're going to come up to your user icon up the top right here and go to my account and this brings up our control panel. So we're going to say sign into Google, in other words all the ways that we use our two-step, our password, all those important things and we go up to two-step. Now there's a new tab here which Google have added in the past year because these uh, little keys are, they are new um, and it says security keys and it tells us that security key is a device that makes signing into your Google account more secure. So let's go ahead and register one, so we're going to add a security key. So it says make sure you have your key with you, which I do, and remove it if already inserted. Now when we click register, it's now going to be looking at my USB ports and waiting for me to plug in the device. I'm going to plug the device in now. And you can see just like that, it's detected it and it's it exchanged the key with the device. Now what's actually happening here? Well, first off, you should know that your device is incredibly secure. The chip found on it, this little device here, is the same as the ones found on credit and debit cards as well as SIM cards and even the new generation of e-passports that are being introduced across European countries. Now when you registered your account with Google, when we set up the chip earlier on in this video, you generated a public, which is down here, and a private key. Now Google have the public key and the device that has the private key, the only device which has the private key, is the USB chip on your key ring. Now those two keys come together to unlock your account and provide that second layer of yeah, authentication when you're logging in to Google services. Okay, so let's say we're now at a completely different computer and we're going to log into our account that we've just set up with unique two-factor authentication. So let's enter my username and then ask me for my password, which hasn't changed. Um, spell it apparently. There we go. Okay, and it says now, whereas before it asked me to send a code to my phone, it now says insert your security key. So I'm going to do that now. I've plugged into my USB port and let's see how long it takes to recognize it. Uh, got to retry. I was too busy talking. Okay, so we plug it into my USB port and there we go. It's recognized it and I'm logged in. So just like that, you plug it in and you're logged into your account. Um, so that is essentially the same principle, you're getting a secondary code uh, this time through this little USB key, it could have been sent to your phone, but I think the USB key personally is more neat because it can simply go on your key ring or your ID badge and you've got it with you all the time then in case you need to sign into a new computer. So that was a brief roundup of unique two-factor authentication. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, I would like to, before we finish, draw your attention to the DHSB Digital Leaders website. It's uh, dhsbdigitalleaders.co.uk and this is where you can go to find a range of more videos as well as to contact us. So if you've got any questions about two-factor authentication, you can drop us an email and we'll be all too happy to reply to you. We're also on Twitter if you prefer to communicate that way and there are lots of blog posts uh, and other videos by other members of our team helping you with tasks ranging from your Google account to uh, specific software. In this case, uh, Kieran has demonstrated code combat. Thank you for listening and have a great day.